Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Atempo Kikam Technology Nigeria web session. I'm delighted to have you all on board today. And my name is Nick Crisp. I work uh, in Atempo in Paris, and I'm joined today by two people from Atempo who will take you through the solution Lena to talk about protection for your endpoints, and uh, we'll also uh, mention obviously our friends in Lagos at uh, KCAM Technologies. So first of all, introduce uh, Pierre, Pierre Vallée. Morning, Pierre. Good morning, everybody. Pierre, business developer for Tempo, and we also have online Thibaut Lozier, solutions engineer. Good morning, Thibaut. Yes, good morning. And uh, just a, a, a few points of order before we start the session, and I'll hand over to Pierre. If you do have any questions um, during the uh, webinar, please use the, the chat and we'll uh, take the questions, note them down and uh, take some time at the end to answer these questions. So uh, sit back and uh, I'll let Pierre take over. Okay, thank you, Nick. Special uh, thanks uh, for, for you, for everybody to be here. And uh, special thanks for uh, Bonnie, uh, uh, Make we from uh, KCAM Technology uh, to 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 build all this uh, opportunity to 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 to, to give you this uh, website. So uh, take a look uh, about Atempo and who we are. So which is interesting for you to understand. It's uh, Atempo is a software company. Uh, working uh, during a long time because uh, 28 uh, years old uh, today. So it's a strong uh, software company working in France. All the development uh, are built uh, in France too. And all the support of this product and the product we are speaking about uh, is built, uh, built in France too. So. Uh, let's uh, let's say a tempo is something like uh, two two hundred people more uh, in a few time because we have a lot of uh, opportunity job open today, so it will growing uh, strongly, and um, having your head uh, something like two thousand customer uh, today for a tempo around the world. Uh, with a specific um, information I want to give you, it's uh, if I speak about a logo like uh, Carrefour, which is uh, a strong company in France, or about Renault, which is a manufacturing car, maybe you know perfectly well. Uh, I, I, I said about one logo, but we can speak about 500 sites working with uh, the company. So. Take a look of, about about the the international presence of Atempo. Uh, in in these pictures, you can see on green all the office where you can find some uh, some pre-sales and some uh, uh, sales people working. Is it uh, South Korea, China, Germany, UK, uh, France, of course, Singapore? Uh, each the, the, the green uh, dot is uh, the, the office uh, of Atempo uh, around the world. Uh, take a look uh, also on the yellow dot, uh, which is customer side and necessary if we are some co customer side in this uh, country, uh, we can find uh, like uh, Kekam Technology, a partner locally working in this uh, area. Just one information uh, more, it's about uh, artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, today, we have a specific department working uh, uh, with uh, the with Atempo. His name is Nextino. And which is interesting to, 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 to have uh, on your head, it's uh, this activity is a focus on the machine learning for your data. And it's uh, uh, really interesting to, to understand all the process of data management, all the process of migration, all the process of protection uh, could be uh, in a few uh, months 
uh, helping by this kind of tools uh, for uh, our company. Um, we speak about the company, we speak about uh, who we are, which is interesting for you. It's to have an idea about uh, different customer we can have. Is it a financial customer? Is it uh, administration? Is it a scientific area? Is it uh, industrial uh, activity? You can uh, uh, pick up uh, a look and take a look about different logo we have. One of the logo I love is the NASA uh, because I'm uh, uh, really interested by this activity. But take also a, a look uh, in uh, our customer uh, in uh, media entertainment, uh, retail, uh, healthcare, and as you can see, some great logos, some great customer like uh, 20th Century Fox, US, uh, Kia B, and I want to give you information about Africa in deep. So uh, Tunisia, we can we can uh, speak about different customers like Advancia Teleservice and Autophone, or uh, maybe a CTM CCV. Uh, we can have some. We have also a customer in uh, Ivory Coast. I think about uh, uh, Sogeri uh, Bank, which is a banking. Morocco, we have some uh, uh, customer, uh, looks like Redal Veolia, looks like Renault, we speak just before, looks like CTM, looks like MAP. Also customer uh, using our tools in Mauritania. Uh, I think it's uh, El Amara uh, BAI uh, Bank uh, working with uh, our tools. Some customer in uh, Niger, customer in Madagascar, customer uh, in Cameroon, uh, like uh, BSEC. So, as you can uh, understand, uh, we are also uh, working uh, uh, and uh, uh, already in, with success uh, in Africa. I speak about success and I want to give a view about different label and hardware we can have. One of these label is a GDPR ready. All the products we are going to, to speak with you uh, are today uh, GDPR uh, ready. Uh, in this uh, slide, you can see different uh, uh, awards, but one of the awards, uh, I'm, uh, two awards in fact, uh, for me is really important. One of them is uh, the use by a uh, French army, which is for you uh, thinking about security of the product, quality of the product, because as you know, when you sell some software to administration looks like army, you have to be uh, with a, a good uh, and strong uh, software. Uh, is it for the usage, but also for the security? The other awards I want to speak about is the French Tech Pass, which is for us uh, uh, really interesting to 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 have and to to give you the the the, the proof of the quality of the the company. Take a look now about. Uh, the, um, the portfolio we have. So today we are going to speak in deep in the Lina uh, software, but just to give you uh, an overview of over uh, software we have, we can have a solution if you speak uh, about unstructured data with Miria, which is a strong tools for data management archive, but for massive uh, made, uh, data set. We can also have a backup solution for server and application. Is it uh, uh, physical or not uh, server and uh, all the application you have and we speak about Tina. You can find in our portfolio 
a specific uh, turnkey uh, appliance, which is all inclusive uh, solution, hardware and software. And of course, Lina for desktop and for laptop. This tool is really uh, interesting uh, solution. And, and we are going to, to speak uh, about in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a few moments. So is it, it's interesting for you to have the, 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 the market coverage. So is it for small business? Is it for medium business? Is it for large uh, company? We can push different uh, solution. As you see, Lina can have also small, medium and a large enterprise. Tina is more than medium plus and large enterprise. Miria is really in a strong uh, company with a lot of data. We speak about beta site and Backstone is looks like uh, Lina, small, medium and maybe sometimes a large uh, company. So, uh, which is interesting to, 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 to speak about, it's to, to speak about what, what we are, uh, uh, in, in which position we are today. We have uh, from uh, maybe uh, middle of March, uh, a global health crisis for all the world of the, um, the different uh, uh, pays, countries, country, all the different countries. So, uh, and a lot of people have to go home, pick up the, the IT tools they have on the, on the, on the company and work from uh, the office. A lot of companies uh, go and uh, work in remote collaboration. A lot of companies uh, unstructured the, the, the IT position they have uh, before uh before the the covid crisis and uh, maybe they don't think about the security of the data is it for laptop or a workstation in this map what we can see we see the, the crisis of the covid but which is uh, for me interesting it to to have a view looks like we are looking for me this map of the world is this like we are going in a website and uh, see the different attack we have? Uh, is it for uh, ransomware and uh, virus? So today we are in a COVID pandemic, and I'm going to to give the the phone to uh, to Thibault uh, to explain to you what it is what is it interesting to think about cyber pandemic uh, moment yes thank you pierre um, as uh, as you said we also see a cyber cyber pandemic uh, because uh, um, for a couple of years now we see an exploding number of cyber attacks and uh, uh, it's also uh, we 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 are we we also view um, an increasing complexity of these these attacks. Uh, maybe some of you uh, have have been uh, attacked by uh, ransomwares, malwares, or some phishing attacks. Uh, and now everyone everyone has this kind of story in his in his company, and no company is immune to that. Even if you have the best the best tools to protect uh, your infrastructure and your laptops desktops servers with a, a good antivirus with maybe i don't know some uh, artificial intelligence inside your your anti malware it, it, usually it's not enough even with the best tools you are not sure that you won't face uh, a ransomware attack for example and now for for a couple of years we see a lot and uh, more and more attacks of this kind. Uh, you just have to look uh, over the news and every day, I don't know in Nigeria, but in France, uh, almost every week we have uh, a news about a big company uh, having uh, suffering from a, a cyber attack. Usually it's ransomware. And for example, Renault, uh, Renault two years ago, uh, almost two years ago, Renault has to, had to stop completely the production of, um, of cars 
uh, in France in, uh, in one of its, pro uh, its production sites. And for one month, they had to stop completely the production. So it was very bad for, for business, for, for Renault. They lost uh, uh, a few millions because, just because of a bad protection and of a ransomware attack. And what is, what is very interesting too uh, with ransomware is that uh, even if you pay the ransom, uh, it's not a guarantee that you will have your data back. Uh, in only 25%, um, um, you will get your data back by paying the ransom. So in 75%, you won't get your data back. So it is very important to invest in uh, protection tools, uh, in data protection tools, because whatever you will do in your company, uh, maybe you will face some data loss. And with the COVID outbreak, uh, it's also interesting to see that cr cyber criminals are taking advantage of this outbreak and they are targeting, sometimes uh, they are targeting hospitals because they know that hospitals are uh, just, um, how do you say, uh, uh, they are just too busy to, to care about security because they have to face the outbreak of COVID. And so they are taking advantage of that and they target the hospitals to get a maximum of money uh, from them. We are talking today about endpoints. So endpoints are desktop, laptops, and end user devices that you may have. And what's interesting with uh, these endpoints is that they are subject to many kinds of risks. Um, so here are a few statistics about uh, these risks. The first statistics is, is very interesting is that almost half of companies uh, do not have any solution for backup of desktops and laptops. And usually it's because most solutions are too expensive or too complicated to, to install and to configure. And sometimes they are not able to do the backup correctly. For example, uh, with confinement, it's even harder because most of your users are working from home. So how do you back up data when all your users are working from home? It's even harder than when they are working inside your company. 40%, uh, almost 40% of uh, your enterprise data are stored exclusively on these laptops. So you have 40% uh, of your data that are exposed to data loss. And laptops and uh, laptops um, can be lost, can be uh, broken, can be uh, uh, stolen. So you are facing really many, many different kinds of risks. Uh, it's not the case with the server. For example, if you are, most of your server are already backed up and they are inside a server room with specific physical access, with, with maybe we need a, a specific badge to access your, your, that, your server room. But laptops, it's not, so, it's not like that. Uh, your users are just taking their laptops uh, with them when they, when they travel. So as you can see, uh, there are around um, 12,000 laptops uh, that are lost every week in, um, in airports all around the world. And in 97% of cases, when your laptop is stolen, you never retrieve it. So it's very important to, to have a, a good protection on these laptops. So the challenges of endpoint protection, they are multiples because uh, first you would like to be able to back up your data from any location. You don't care if your users are on site or uh, working from home or maybe traveling inside an airport connected to uh, public Wi-Fi or maybe connected through a 3G or a very bad connection. Uh, you want to be able to do uh, the backups in any case and in any location. Uh, you also want to be able to quickly rebuild a complete laptop. Uh, if your CEO uh, lost his, his laptop, you want to be able to give a new laptop with all its data very quickly because uh, it, it won't be, he won't be able to work until you give, you give him uh, its, uh, its laptop with all its configuration. And you want to minimize the data loss in case of restoration, because if you are doing, uh, for example, if you are doing backup every week of uh, all your laptop, maybe when you restore data, you will lose 
one week of work. And this is not uh, acceptable in some cases. So you want to minimize this data loss and be able to restore uh, just before the data just before uh, you had an issue uh, on, on this data. Uh, you also want to protect without impacting the user. It's very important on desktop protection, desktop and laptop protection, because you are on the user device and you, you don't want to impact the user device. If you are using too much resources to do your backups, the users will try to disable uh, the backup. So you want to be as, tra as transparent as possible for them. And you also want to empower users to restore data by themselves. Uh, this means you don't want your users to call, to have to call the support to be able to restore data. Because if you have 1,000 users, uh, maybe you have 1,000 users calling your support and uh, it's, it's too much. You want your users to, to be autonomous uh, and be able to restore data by themselves easily. So the solution to address all these challenges uh, is Lina. Uh, so today we are, we are talking specifically about one of our products, which is dedicated to desktop and laptop protection. And Lina is a very interesting solution in many, uh, on many points. The first point is that Lina is a continuous data protection solution. What we mean by that is we are able to do backup every minute on laptops and we keep all versions of all files uh, during the specified retention. So maybe when you will restore your data, uh, you will only lose a few minutes or maybe not even one minute of work on this data. And this is actually an, advanta uh, uh, an advantage to do continuous data protection for us because it's easier uh, to do backup continuously uh, and to uh, avoid using too much uh, resources on desktop and laptops. Because we are doing backup every minute, every minute we only have a very few uh, portions of data to transfer and very, uh, very few data to backup. So it's, it's transparent for user. All along the day, uh, we, do, we just transfer a small portion of data instead of uh, transferring all the data at a specific time of the day. And because of that, we are able to do backups from any location, even if you don't have your VPN, um, uh, even if you don't use VPN to be in your corporate network, we are doing backup over internet directly. And um, it's not using um, much bandwidth, it's not using much uh, CPU or RAM. And all we are doing that is uh, we are doing deduplication, block storage, uh, block deduplication. And this deduplication, uh, uh, what, what we are doing is we try to see if we already have blocks or files. And if we already backed up the same file on another laptop, we won't have to transfer it over the network. And even better, we won't have to store it uh, twice on the server itself. So this is the third point greatly reduce backup storage. Uh, with Lina, we, you just need a few terabytes to backup maybe uh, thousands of laptops. Some of our, uh, some of our customers are, uh, have Lina in place to backup sometimes 2,000 laptops on the same server, and this server usually is less than 50 terabytes in, uh, in storage. And it's more than enough because we are doing all this deduplication and this deduplication is done at source, which means if you back up the same file on uh, 1000 laptops, uh, you, you will have to transfer it and store it only once on, uh, on the network and on the server itself. So it's very interesting to have this kind of uh, feature. We also add compression to even, um, to, uh, to optimize a bit more uh, we add compression over the deduplication. Our uh, fourth point is self-service restores. As I said before, we want users to be able to do restoration by themselves. So self-service restore, we, are, we have many different ways in Lina for users to restore data. And whatever the way they will use, 
We don't care. We just want them to be able to restore the data. For example, you can do a right click on a file and see all the versions of, uh, of this file and restore just the version you want. Or maybe you will uh, use the restore wizard. Restore wizard is really uh, very easy to use uh, for end users. And restore wizard is just asking some very easy to understand question for, for the end user. For example, we are asking, do you know what you want to restore? Is it a file, is it a folder? Do you know when you lost it? Do you know where you lost it on your, on your desktop? And after all these steps, we will present the users with all file uh, matching the criteria he, he, he gave us. Fifth point is centrally manage your policies. Uh, what is interesting with Lina is once your agents are connected on uh, the server, you can do everything from the server. For example, uh, you can set up all your protection policies and say, okay, today I want to back up all the desktops um, the, and all the documents, documents folder on all uh, desktop and laptops. And maybe next day you will change your mind and say, no, okay, so now I want to exclude some parts of uh, the desktop, uh, desktop folder. And you can do that in a few seconds. You just modify your protection policy and a few seconds later, all your agents will have this new protection applied directly without having to make a configuration on the agents. So it's very easy to use. It's centrally managed. Uh, on the server. And I did not talk about it uh, uh, for the moment, but Lina is a solution that you can deploy on premise on your own infrastructure. It can be, for example, a virtual machine or a physical server, depending on the configuration. Uh, it can also be deployed in cloud uh, if you want to host everything in, into the cloud. And uh, we also have um, a software as a service offer. If you would like to, to test it, uh, you, can, uh, you can have a few agents. Actually, we have a, a, a free offer uh, up to the 5th, September, 5th of September. And you can try the agent itself and it's uh, backing up directly to the cloud. And last point is we are fully compatible with most major OS uh, on the market. So uh, we have agents for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, we have also agents for Synology NAS. If you have a small NAS, a small Synology NAS, you can deploy uh, the agent directly on the NAS and be able to back up directly this NAS uh, into a central, uh, central server, central backups. So the key features of Lina um, is continuous data protection. We said it already with uh, RPO recovery point objective from one minute to one day. Most of our customers are using a one minute, five minutes or 15 minutes. Um, uh, what do you say? Uh, 15 minutes frequency for their backups. And we keep all versions of all files uh, for the retention that you define on the server. For example, if you select 90 days of retention for three months, you will be able to go back on any versions of any files. Uh, we also provide time, time navigation is something specific uh, at, uh, uh, we, we have in all Atempo products is the ability to, um, what do you say, to compare two versions of your backups. For example, you can compare two different dates and see what, what files and what folders have been modified, have been deleted between these two dates. So it's really easy with time navigation to identify which file you want to restore. Usually in a few seconds, you will be able to see the, the deleted files and select them for restoration. Network and storage optimization is very important because uh, we are uh, using our own um, uh, deduplication engine and this deduplication engine is what allows us to back up uh, laptops and desktops even if you have uh, um, a shitty connection with uh, maybe some lag with maybe some disconnection um, we are able to do it even on slow connection we are able to do the backups thanks to the deduplication uh, which is global 
which means uh, the same file on multiple laptops will only be transferred and will only be stored once. Um, and also the compression to even go further into optimization. And compression is both for network and storage too, uh, just like the duplication. So usually we see some very high ratio of deduplication on, on Lina, Lina de deployments. Uh, also, I don't have a specific point on, of, on that, but we are using um, encryption to transfer the data between all the agent and the server. So you can use even uh, public Wi-Fi to do the backups. Uh, you won't have any issue with the confidentiality of your data. And user's autonomy with easy to use interfaces. We talked about this one. Um, we have multiple way of doing the restore, restore wizards, uh, explore integration with a right click on a file, but also we have a web restoration. Web restoration is for example, you lost your desktop and you need to access right now uh, a specific file that was on your laptop. Uh, you can use a tablet or a phone and to access a web, a specific web page, and on this web page, we will be able to select a file inside your backup and to download it to maybe work on it right now. So it's very easy to use, and the user is just uh, entering his, um, his email address, and he will be able, after that, to see all his backup. We also have some advanced, um, advanced configuration on the server itself. A Lina server are able to replicate themselves. Uh, so if you have multiple servers, you can do, for example, full mirroring, which is a complete, um, a complete replication of from one server to another one, and it's going uh, both ways. Uh, you can also do some selective replication, which means you don't have to replicate all the data. Maybe you want you want to replicate only the critical data, maybe only uh, the backups of uh, VIP, uh, your CEO and uh, executive committee. And you can do that in Lina and select just this backup for replication. Also, we provide some flexible backup policies. Uh, in Lina, you can define what you want to, uh, to backup, but you can also uh, do some specific rules where the users are able to change some part of the rules you set. For example, you can say on the desktop folder, the users should be able to exclude some, uh, some folders. And on another folder, maybe you won't have that and say, no, this one is enforced and the user can change anything on this part of the protection. So this is very flexible. Inside the same protection, you can have some mandatory enforced rules by the administrator and some um, rules that are maybe optional and the users can modify them. And we have a broad, broad platform support uh, since we provide agents for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Synoginas. And all these agents have the same way uh, of working with all the global deduplication. So we don't care if the file you are backing up is the same on a Windows and a Mac, we will see that it's the same and we won't have to transfer it. And our deduplication is not working on file level, it's working even uh, lower. It's working on block level, so we are um, cutting files in, into small blocks and checking if these blocks has, uh, is already present on the server. If it's already present, we just do a pointer, we don't transfer it. So this is very important for uh, bad connections. This is an example of uh, backup architecture uh, of Lina. So for example, you will have um, a Lina server installed on your central site backing up uh, all the desktops and laptops from this site. Uh, maybe you have some remote sites that are connected with a VPN, or maybe it's just um, users that are working from home that are connecting uh, through VPN. In this case, you don't need anything at all, any specific configuration to do the backups. The agent will start the backup. Um, what we need is just that the agent is able to connect to the server. It's never the server that is uh, asking the agent to do the, to do the backup. It's always the other way around. So it's the agent connecting to the server. Uh, and once they are connected to the server, they will start the backup. This is, this is very important because uh, some solutions 
uh, are using the other way to do that and it's not a good way because if your users are working from home and they are not connected to the VPN, they won't be able to, to do the backup. Or maybe over VPN, they won't be able to do the backup. So the other way to, to uh, deploy Lina is to use what we call a reverse proxy. Reverse proxy basically is just a web server that is uh, doing proxy between the public network, internet, and your local network. And so you can expose just a, a specific part of your Lina server on internet. And the advantage of doing that is um, you don't need a VPN to do the backup. Once the agent, once the laptop is connected to internet, it will start the backup right, uh, right, uh, right away. So you just need an internet connection, no VPN at all, and the, the agent will do the backups over internet. And we have many deployments like this. And with uh, the confinement and the COVID outbreak, we have more and more uh, customers asking to deploy the solution with a reverse proxy. And also, I talked about this um, previously, but roaming users can use their, their uh, phone or tablets to download data from their backup. Uh, if they lost, uh, if they lost their, their um, uh, laptop, they can use that to, to have access to their backup. So it's very easy. So how Lina can I help you? Uh, whatever you, uh, whatever is the issue that you have on your, on your data, we should be able to help you. So for example, if it's a human error, you deleted or modified a file by mistake, uh, really easily you can do a right click on this file or you can do a right click on the folder and see all the versions of this file and restore just the right version. And also you can pre-visualize uh, a version of the file before restoring it. So you, uh, you can ensure that it's a correct version, it is the correct version you want to restore. For viral attacks, uh, crypto virus and ransomware, what is very inter interesting in Lina is that you can restore data just before, just a few minutes before the attack, uh, the attack. So just a few minutes preceding the attack. So you won't lose days of work. You will only lo lose a few minutes uh, of your your work on these files. On loss, theft, natural disaster, or hardware issue, uh, you can do a complete bare metal restore. This is available for Windows, um, and you can restore a complete machine. Uh, with operating system and data in, a, in a just one, uh, one restoration. So we are providing an ISO that you can uh, burn on, on a CD or that you can use on a USB key. And you start on this USB key to do your, the restoration and to restore everything, operating system and data. And very easily you can uh, do a complete restoration of a desktop. Uh, also, what's interesting on this one is we are able to do restoration even if the new laptop is not the same and even if the new laptop do not have a uh, uh, bigger disk than uh, the original one. So uh, usually most new laptops comes with uh, SSD disk and SSD tends to be smaller than uh, magnetic disk. So with Lina, you are able to restore even if the destination disk is smaller than the original one. And last file outside the enterprise, so roaming users. Uh, in this case, if you lost a file, uh, you can use the web restoration, web restore interface to restore the data directly on uh, another laptop or uh, on a tablet or phone very easily. So that's it. Uh, no, I can, I can show you the product itself, really. So let me share my screen. Okay, great. So I'm on a machine with a Lina agent installed. So Lina agent can be started from, um, uh, from the standard Windows menu. Uh, you have a few options with the restore wizard and uh, parameters. And you can also, you have also an icon just next to the hour with the latest status. 
And I don't know if you can see it, but on the last protection, which means the last backup is was today at 12.43, which is my local time. So that means that the last backup just occurred a few seconds ago. It's just to show you that it's really continuous data protection. And this agent is doing backups every minute. So if I'm doing a new uh, modification on a file, uh, in just one minute, it will be backed up. From there, you can do some monitoring. Uh, you can uh, modify some settings. For example, if you let your users uh, manage their own backup rules, they can use the settings menu to uh, select what folders they want and maybe what kind, uh, what files they want to uh, to exclude. So no agent rule means I don't, uh, I did not set any rules on the agent itself. It sort rules that are uh, provided by the, by the server, by the administrator of the solution. So uh, as you can see, I'm backing up all the, the windows and all the PC. Um, uh, I have a specific folder on, on this agent, which is called work, where I made a mistake on a file a few minutes ago. Uh, oops, I think I've made a mistake on this file. So <laughs> the, the content of this file is not the, the correct content. Uh, so what I will do is just do a right click on the file. As you can see, we have a specific menu, which is called a tempo live Navig navigator on the right click. And I can do show version, show file versions. And you can see I have many, uh, I have five versions of this file, uh, just uh, one minute away, uh, one from the other one. And the latest one is weirdly just two kilobytes and the other one was uh, 190 kilobytes. So maybe this one is better than the latest one where I made the mistake. So I will just preview uh, one version, the latest version just before um, the issue. And as, as you can see, I can previsualize this version. Uh, okay, it's a correct version. So now I just select continue, restore to original location and overwrite uh, the file. And after a few seconds, my file have been restored. And now if I open the file, I have my content inside. So it's very easy. And you can use this menu, but you can also use the restore wizard. So for example, right click uh, next to the hour, Restore wizard, and uh, restore wizard is even easier to use. So, restore wizard. What do you want? Do you want to restore a file or restore a folder? Okay, I want to restore a file. My file. Do you know where the file was? You can even say no. Uh, I don't know where my file was, but in my case, I do know where it was. So I will select my work folder. I don't know the file type. Uh, my file was, was saved maybe 30 minutes. Okay, and we found one file corresponding to, to this. And so now I can select next and see all the version. And as you can see, the new file I restored have already been um, backed up again because it's uh, doing the same size as the previous one. Uh, my my ish, my uh, my wrong file was only two kilobytes kil kilobytes sorry. Okay, and so now I can restore this file again. And I can show you just very quickly the server side. So the server, when you install the server, it's a web server and uh, it's all going through web. Uh, both administration and backups are going through a web interface. So in my case, I'm already logged on my server and I can see the list of all agents that are connected to my server and the status. Okay, this agent has a correct status. As you can see, I protected uh, 150 gigabytes on this, uh, this machine. And the protection is Windows free protection, which means the agent is able to do its own um, it's on rules. If you want to modify a rule, it, it can modify a rule. And one interesting part is the dashboard. Uh, as you can see on my small uh, lab setup, I have a deduplication ratio of only five, but it's already quite nice, uh, which means I'm able to restore uh, four, 400 gigabytes of data, but I'm only storing 100 gigabytes of data. 
So I divide it by five, uh, the amount of data I need to store the backups, but uh, I also divide it by more than five, uh, the data needed, uh, uh, the data transferred uh, to the server for these backups. Uh, you can see the activity and the hardware usage on the server. And very easily from there, you can define your strategies. Uh, for example, you will define what uh, retention you want. So I want a retention of 30 days. You can define if you want to replicate data to another server, if you have a, a secondary server. Uh, maybe put some quotas to limit the agents and uh, define the um, frequency of backups. And one interesting point also is you can define what the agent is able to do on its agent itself. So the end user maybe won't, uh, you do, do not allow web restore, do not allow agent rules, uh, do not allow to post protection and the user won't be able to, to uh, say, no, I don't want to do backups. Uh, backups will only go through. Will always go through, sorry. Okay. And just a latest, uh, a last, uh, last item is protections. Protections are where you define your backup policies. Uh, for example, uh, Windows free protection on the entire agent. So in this protection, I protect the system directory, but it's a free protection. So it's not protected by default and the user can do whatever he wants on this protection. And on the entire computer, I do not protect anything except those specified by users. So it's up to the user to decide what you want to do uh, on this machine if I set this kind of protection. And so that's it for my part. Thank you very much, uh, Thibault. Uh, as you explained, the uh, product is uh, simple, useful, accessible. So really nice uh, i see we have uh, some question and maybe nick wants to to give the the, the microphone to uh bunny uh, uh, yeah we have bunny um, maybe i'll just uh, promote bunny to the uh, session so you can use your microphone uh bunny and if you want to say a few words um and while we're waiting for bunny we can uh, take, a, take a few questions perhaps um, I, I see we have a question from Jude on cloud security. Uh, maybe uh, very quickly, uh, Thibaut, uh, the, the question basically is on uh, cloud security. What, what type of security measures can we talk about when we're protecting uh, the data in uh, the Lina cloud backup uh, format? Security. Uh, okay, I'm not sure to understand the question, but uh, there are many different levels of security. Uh, when you deploy a Lina server, uh, you will have all versions of all backed up files uh, for the retentions that you define, and these backups are not uh, subject to ransomware attacks because they are stored in a specific format on the server itself. And also, I did not talk about this in the presentation, but the server can be installed on both Windows and Linux. So if you want, you can, maybe if you have only Windows uh, desktops, uh, you will use a Linux server to ensure that you have a different kind of uh, operating system on your server and to avoid any issues you could have on your laptops on the server itself. But uh, usually uh, the server side is not subject to any kind of attacks because it, we are we are using very specific ways to store the data and a ransomware is not able to encrypt anything on our servers. Okay, thank you Thibault. Um, we, we did talk very briefly. Be... Yeah. Yeah. We, we talked very briefly about the, uh, oh, it's good, it's good. the COVID-19 uh, offer. Ah, Bonnie, Bonnie is uh, on stage. Uh, maybe Bonnie, have, can, you, uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you guys. Yeah, hi, Bunny. Uh, if you'd like to say yeah, a few hi. words, um, uh, just from our part, from a tempo, uh, thanks for having us today and organizing this session with us. It was a real pleasure to uh, to be able to uh, discuss Lena with you today. So thanks, Bunny. Yeah, excellent. Um, I want to thank the Atempo team for, for, for this uh, event and uh, also for all our participants. This is going to be the beginning of a whole lot of um, <coughs> webinars over time. 
And just like they mentioned, they have about four major products. You have the Miria, you have the, um, you have the Lina, you have the Black, Blackstone, and I think four of them. So basically, there are some that are also dedicated to certain industry, like um, in government and also in, um, in the entertainment sector. Um, the television stations, the, the, the radio stations, the TV stations, and so on and so forth, where you have a very huge amount of data generation. And also across enterprise, when you're talking about um, migration of unstructured data, Lina uh, Atempo has a, a competitive advantage um, across all um, um, known um, competition, as it were. Very, very unique. I mean, if uh, the, the major leading uh, television stations and TV stations in the world are using a tempo to back up their, uh, their data and also do migration, then you, you can be assured of, of the quality of service that we'll be able to deliver, you know, with a tempo uh, working for the Nigerian market and also extending to Ghana, because I can see some of our friends in Ghana are also here. Um, we want to assure you of very good support and we shall be putting together some uh, promo events um, um, working with our tempo, um, which uh, should be coming up within the next two, three weeks. And like uh, was also mentioned, um, some free versions are available for you to try out and see how this will be able to help you. And then you can also uh, cascade it down to your, to your enterprises. Um, Pierre, I want to thank you so much. I appreciate all the time and uh, all our participants. And uh, please feel free if you have um, any any um, um, feel free if you have any question, please let us know. Yeah, basically, first it's ease of use. Ease of use. Um, the, the solution is is very easy to use. Um, I can see the question from Mr. Femi Fred. Ease of use is the key thing. Um, two, it is it is it is highly price sensitive without any compromise on quality. You know, the price is is reasonable without a compromise on quality. Then. Then thirdly, um, is the fact that uh, there are some very unique issues which um, have been raised that are not available, which means that you can actually back up even without the VPN, you know. So there are two approaches you can do a backup. And with the current situation, we've had a, call, a couple of calls and people calling us of data they've lost during this period, attacks they've had on, on remote laptops and desktops arising from uh, COVID and of course, a lot of people are running into the problems of um, 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 uh, phishing, phishing attack. And uh, the curiosity of, uh, of every human being makes us um, highly vulnerable to phishing attacks. And phishing attacks are hitting everywhere. You know? So this is a solution that is uh, that will be very useful. It can be implemented on a virtual machine, on a physical machine, and also in the cloud. Uh, so it's quite flexible, absolutely very flexible. So, guys, you guys can take over. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thanks, Bonnie. And uh, thanks to you and, and all your teams. And uh, we're almost out of time. I, I see one of the questions there that Thibaut uh, very kindly uh, answered uh, from yes. Victor. We have a few more questions. And you can see on the screen our uh, emails. You can contact Pierre. Thibault and CM in a tempo, and obviously uh, the KCAM teams in uh, in Lagos. And uh, if you have any questions, and we will answer each question individually, of course. And maybe the final word for, for 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 Pierre. Yeah, if you want to say a final word, Pierre. Yeah, uh, what well, well, I can say it's uh, take a, a look about this, this product. This is for for you. Uh, really a, a great opportunity to access to to a, a strong tools uh, easy to use not expensive and uh, uh, really efficient so uh, be free to call us to ask us to 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 ask us to have a demonstration or a park uh, if it's necessary and uh, at tempo and kcam is already working uh, end to end Oh, uh, and we will uh, give you some uh, uh, great information if we, we we can in a few weeks about a specific bundle uh, to access to the to, 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 to the tools. Okay. Take care of you and take care of your Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All, all the best to everybody and uh, stay safe 
and we will speak to you very soon. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Thibault. And thank you, Bonnie, of course. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Pierre. Bye. Thibault, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.